Late last year, my 11 year old came to me and he had this crazy idea. He wanted to fully 3D print a Mark 85 Iron Man suit. Now, of course, I had absolutely no idea where to even start. I didn't even know if such a thing was possible, but he was pretty convinced and I did what any good dad would do and kind of pushed the effort onto him. I said, hey, if you can figure out how to do this, what the process looks like, then yeah, I'm game, let's do this. This dude is tenacious. Within 48 hours, he came back to me with not only a plan, but a list of videos for us to watch and, and even the ultimate model that we ended up using from DO3D. I need to put some of this blame for this project on people like Frankly Built. Uh, shout out, dude, because if you didn't have all these amazing videos online about how you built your own Mark 85 suit, this would have been much harder for us to accomplish. Now the next step we had to figure out after that was actually scaling this thing to fit. Obviously the DO3D model was made for somebody that's just over six foot tall and this was for an 11 year old kid. So we were gonna have to do quite a bit of scaling. Doing the research, we found that there's a program called Armorsmith. And while it's not exactly straightforward to get this scaled perfectly, it does step you through the process. And the first step is taking various measurements around the body, head circumference, legs and arms, that sort of thing. What this helps you do is create sort of a dummy mannequin of yourself in the software that you can then layer on the individual 3D printed pieces and sort of scale and fit. Now, this process is definitely a lot of trial and error, especially when you don't really know how much room things like servo motors and electronics are gonna take inside the helmet. And we ended up selecting PLA Plus for the actual printing of the pieces because it's a little bit more durable and higher temp than PLA. It's still relatively easy to sand, paint, and primer, and we knew that paint would actually stick to it. Now, of course, it was time to start 3D printing. We knew that process alone, just based on our early calculations, was going to take at least five or six weeks minimum on our Prusa Mark 3S. Now, if you have a larger build plate or a larger 3D printer, or one of the newer Core XY printers like a Bamboo or a Voron, you're going to cut those print times down pretty significantly. But for us, one of the challenges we had is that the printer doesn't have the largest build volume. So for pieces like the chest, the back, and even some of the leg joints, we knew that we were going to have to slice those into multiple pieces, which meant that after the fact, we were going to have to glue those pieces together before we could actually start sanding and painting everything. Now, the good part about that is this means that obviously if we can do it, you can do it on just about any 3D printer that you have. It just means that you're going to have a little bit extra sanding and post-processing to do after you're done printing. Since these are FDM printers, if you want that paint job to be really movie perfect and smooth, you're going to have to spend a tremendous amount of time sanding. For us to get this done in a reasonable amount of time, we ended up going with 0.3 millimeter layer lines. Couple that with the gluing that we had to do for the pieces that we cut and you have to spend quite a bit of time on that post-processing. Now, one of the tricks that we did find out a little bit into the project is that by using things like wood filler, you can actually get it to bond to the plastic and it cuts out some of that time a little bit. It also helps if you use a nice thick primer and use multiple coats of it sanding in between each coat. By doing that, you can get rid of most of those layer lines and get to a really high quality finish. And that's going to be so important because the work and effort that you put into this now while you're actually doing the post-processing is going to pay off big time once you get to the end and you're putting those last few layers of paint on. Now that we had kind of a reasonable process in place, we decided to start test fitting some of the pieces and we ran into problems almost immediately. One of the leg pieces, in this case the upper thigh, we went to put it on my son and the opening at the bottom was just too small to get over his knee comfortably. It felt like he was gonna get trapped in this thing and, and it was gonna cause him some problems overall. So we came up with a solution because we knew we didn't have enough time to start the prints all over again and start scaling things up. And since we were using PLA Plus, we knew that it would melt at a low enough temperature. So we used a heat gun and then gently started bending and molding some of the pieces so that they fit over his body. Now, fair warning, definitely test this out on a failed print first. And trust me, you're going to have plenty of failed prints. We knew one of the next big challenges was going to be the actual paint. Getting that really awesome hot rod red color that you see in the film is something that I think is key to making this look like a real legitimate Iron Man suit. So we spent a lot of time researching the various paint colors that different people use 
and we ended up coming up with Duplicolor Metal Cast Red. By using that along with the gold color and the silver color that we found, we knew that not only was it going to work with the primer that we already used on the rest of the pieces, but it should look pretty awesome. We set to work kind of masking and taping. That's a huge process in and of itself. I can't stress how long this stuff takes. Like anything you think you're doing, it's going to take twice as long as you kind of anticipate. Don't be like us and set aside 12 weeks for this. Give yourself a little bit of breathing room. We had the paint colors picked out. We started layering down some of the primer. We even put our first couple layers of gold. In fact, we painted all of the pieces gold because the gold really pops when the red is actually layered over on top. So once you can kind of see a glimpse of the paint coming along and that final process starting to take shape, it gives you a glimmer of hope that this might actually be possible. And one of the things we really wanted from the movie was the ability for the face mask to actually open and close and for lights to come on in the eyes. So that meant us mounting servo motors in the top of the helmet along with a couple of LED lights that are flexible and an Arduino microcomputer. So we started test fitting all the electronics in the helmet. We went through a whole bunch of trial and error. And trust me, it's more trial and error than you can possibly imagine. It took us probably 20 different tries to get the servos and the electronics lined up just right to get the mask to actually open and close. And that's when we ran into one of the biggest problems we had on this build. When my son test fit this for the first time, it just didn't fit on his head. And so we knew at that point we were going to have to 3D print an entire new helmet. To say we were sort of at our low point of the project is kind of an understatement. I don't think we thought we were going to get done. And you could see the look of disappointment on my son's face. So while the helmet was off to the side printing, we started working on some of the other electronics. We actually had to create an acrylic mold for the arc reactor, and this was something else we had never done before. By using a 3D print of the arc reactor, we were able to create a rubberized mold that we were able to pour the acrylic into. Now, we were originally gonna use some NeoPixel lights, which would have looked awesome inside the arc reactor, but we just didn't have enough time to do all the programming and get it wired up. So we ended up taking some cheap two or three dollar kind of push button LED lights, we took them apart, took the LEDs out of them, layered them down in the very bottom of the arc reactor, and then just poured the acrylic over the top and hoped that it would all work when it dried. Fortunately, it turned out great. And those lights worked so well that we ended up using them for the blasters and the palms and making them wrist actuated so you could kind of flick your wrist up and have the lights turn on and off from the LEDs. Now sort of in between painting all the pieces, we started building the harness. And the harness is such an integral part of this entire project because in order to wear the 3D printed pieces, you've got to build a strap system that can actually support the weight of that. This is another thing that took an incredible amount of trial and error, something we hadn't done before, but we were able to get a bunch of different kind of latches and straps that were flexible enough to where we could build out this harness and get it to actually make sense and fit onto my son's body. The helmet had finished printing. We only had a few days left in order to get this whole thing done. So we started frantically painting the thing and getting the servos and everything else lined up. It took us about two days to get the face mask to actually work and open and close, but we got it done in time and it looked awesome. We'd probably use 50 sticks of hot glue to just mount up the harness and get all the different pieces to come together but it was starting to look like it might actually happen. And finally, just a couple hours until midnight, the night before Halloween, we actually had our first full test fit of the outfit. And I can't tell you how awesome it was to see my son in it for the first time. As soon as we turned it on and the helmet came up, the lights came on and he started using the blasters, it was like I was standing in front of real Iron Man and I've never been so pumped in my life for a project. And then just seeing the smile and the look on my son's face when he started seeing some of the first pictures and videos of himself in there was enough to make this entirely worth it. So we actually did it with just a couple hours to spare and it definitely was not perfect. Even tonight, several months after the fact, my son was still talking about this project and how cool it would be to do something like a heads up display inside of it or even some metal plating on some of the parts. This definitely isn't the last you're going to see of us. Thank you so much for sticking around and checking out the journey. We'll see you next time.